Hi, this is Wilderness Surviving to Thriving. Today we're going to talk about snow shelters or the snow cave. I was out here a couple nights ago, uh, struggling the driveway. It was in the middle of a blizzard. I only had like three matches and I wanted the fire. I failed miserably. I tried to I lit it, the match, the wind blew it out right away. I was covering it also. Um, so if this was in the wild, you know, in the wild, in the wilderness, and this situation happened, uh, primitive methods probably wouldn't work starting the fire uh, because of the fact that it was too wet, too windy. So if you had to spend the night in the wilderness, the way to go would be a snow cave, something like this. Now, would it be this structure? Probably not because of the fact that, uh, you know, I used a shovel for this. Um, it, it didn't take that long, but without a shovel, it would take a lot longer. So there's other things in nature that you can build a, a shelter around. For instance, if there was a blown down tree, you have the root system there. So you can go ahead and put snow there and then dig down. It, you already have half of a wall. Um, it's, you know, sometimes you have uh, evergreen trees out there that um, already is a, is a snow shelter for the most part. Um, you know, all you have to do is just touch it up you know, a little bit. Um, as far as um, you know, snow drifts, stuff like that, that would be the best scenario. You just dig right in. Um, but that's not always available. So um, if you did this method, maybe you, um, you know, split a log, hollow out, uh, use that as a shovel, hollow out, um, you know, maybe the rip of some bark off a tree, um, something like that to use as a shovel to create this. Or you could just do the, um, the snow plow method with your, your hands. But you have to make sure you're wearing the, the appropriate uh, jacket and everything else, waterproof stuff, or you're going to be miserable. Um, so there's some options there. Um, let me just go over a couple things about you know snow shelter. If it was just for one night, I would build a small sh uh, snow shelter like this. Very small opening, as you can see. Barely can get in there. You just scoot in there with your toes, and your head would be right here. And then what you would do is you would just take some extra snow, you take your backpack, whatever, and just close in the gap. That way um, you can stay comfortable. Um, as far as, you know, the opening, you know, you want to make this, if possible, you know, uh, you are closing, so the wind might not get in there. But, um, you know, away from the wind, on the opposite side of the wind, this is a good place to do the opening. Um, but if you're going to go be in there for a couple of days, it's probably better off to have a little bit bigger of a structure so you're not so claustrophobic. Um, you know, this structure, you just make it big enough to, you know, lay flat, maybe turn around, you know, shoulder, you know, width for the most part, you know, maybe curl up a little bit. But you want to keep it small to preserve your heat, um, you know, so your body heat heats up the whole area. Now, a bigger shelter, if, if you're too claustrophobic for this or for long term, uh, what you would do is you would kind of dig in and then up, depending on the grade. Um, and then you can get, like, uh, a stick. What you want to do is, is you don't want to um, be, you want to leave about a foot or so on top. It all depends on, you know, uh, the, uh, the structure of the uh, snow, how wet it is, everything else, and how, you know, thick the walls are on how, how much, you know, you need on top. But say around a foot is, is pretty good. And the way you can measure that is you can get a stick like this, kind of figure out where a foot is, and you just stick it in. When you're digging in there, if, it's kind of like, you know, these are pins, this is a pin cushion. When you stick it in there and you're digging up, you see the stick there, you know the stop, and that's your foot, right, of clearance. I've never done that in a wilderness situation or just playing around as a kid or anything like that, but um, I just kind of estimated, but it, it is a good tool. Also, having the stick is a good thing because you can kind of like circle it around like that and uh, create a hole. You need a hole to get rid of uh, the carbon monoxide. You want to encourage oxygen, get rid of carbon monoxide. Um, other things that you want to do when you have a bigger snow shelter is you want to make sure you have like a bench inside and a lower point. You sleep on the bench and the lower point is for the cold air to fall. So the cold air falls, heat rises as you know, you'll be more comfortable that way. Also smoothing out the insides of the wall with your glove like this, you know, it helps also. What that does is if you have a jaggedness, something sticking out, the water will accumulate and, and, and right here and it will drip on you. If that drips on you, uh, being cold and wet is not a good scenario in this situation. So smoothing out will prevent that or help that out, help that a little bit if you, uh, you know, if you have heat in there. Um, as far as heat, uh, you could cook inside there. But if you do cook inside there, um, that's also a great source of heat. Uh, you got to make sure your your hole is a little bit bigger for the carbon monoxide. Um, 
and you get oxygen in. So make that a little bit bigger. Every once in a while, wiggle it around, wiggle it around, especially if it's snowing, to make sure that the uh, gap is open there. Okay. Um, so a uh, candle, a candle, you know, and the cooking thing is good and bad. It gives you heat. The candle will also will throw off a little bit of heat. It uh, gives you light, which is great. Um, and then also the candle, uh, although it sucks up oxygen, it's also like your canary, <laughs> sort of like in the, uh, you know, the old miners had to have a canary to test for gases. It's kind of like that. Um, they have a canary and it's your canary in there. So if you see the flame flickering or the flame kind of going out or did go out, you know you don't have enough oxygen in there. So you should probably open up the hole a little bit more and get some more oxygen in there. So that's very important. So, um, yeah, those are the main things I would say. You know, definitely have your hole, you know, smooth out the sides and, you know, make sure you have a low point as far as a long-term situation. Short-term, you know, you go with, the, you know, the, the, uh, the small one because of the fact that it just takes too much energy building, you know, the big ones. Um, but anyways, when you're, you know, if you're a child and you're practicing, like I did my whole life, I'm always out there, you know, I've slept in these things, I, you know, played with them, I've done the whole, you know, I, I, I've done it all, you know, as a kid. Uh, make sure, uh, you know, you, if you do one, make sure you have adult supervision for the fact that it could cave in on you. I've, like I said, I've made, you know, hundreds of these things, and I've never had one cave in on me, but uh, just adult supervision would be good. Make sure someone knows that you're in there. Also, uh, when I was a kid, I used to make them by the road where the plow went up. There's a nice, you know, nice pile there you can make it. Well, uh, one time I heard a plow coming, and I and I got out of there really fast, just in time, and the plow just took the thing out. That could have been Matt, that could have been me in there. So I also know a professor of mine back in the day that his uh, son died because a plow hit him when he made a snow cave out there. So make sure you don't make the snow caves by the road. It's very important. So you know, get out there and. Uh, you know, you guys out there are doing survival techniques and practicing and all that, and you don't even know it. The kids and stuff, you know, they're, they're building snow forts, they're running, they're, you know, everything they're doing is, has a purpose in, in life um, as far as survival situations when they're playing, believe it or not. You can think, think about that. Maybe I'll have um, a little survivor do an episode on that. But anyways, um, safety. So just make sure you're safe doing this. And this is uh, Wilderness Surviving to Thriving, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.